What is up YouTube and welcome to this fire starter review and breakdown. Now I did not know this was on Peacock, I was going to go to the cinema, but I sat down at home with a beer and checked out this latest Stephen King adaptation, which for me are pretty hit and miss. While I adore The Shining and Doctor Sleep, as well as It, apart from Chapter 2, the adaptation of The Stand, the recent one, and The Dark Tower were absolutely lacklustre. But here we have a book which itself was adapted in 1984, with Drew Barrymore playing the titular fire starter. And here we have an updated 2020 movie with Zac Efron and that chick who is that person in everything. I am a big Zac Efron fan. I think he's a great actor and I would love to see him in more big budget stuff. And while I did not enjoy this movie, thinking it was largely boring and just middling, I thought Zac Efron did a good job of what he had in front of him. Now we follow Charlie who has powers of pyrokinesis and as a kid sets her room alight. But we flash back to her parents, Andy and Vicky, who took part in a clinical trial which ended up giving them superpowers. Andy is able to influence people and get them to do what he wants and change their perception of reality, while his wife, Vicky, has telekinesis and mind reading abilities. Now they had no idea when they were younger that they were injected with a thing which gives them power as they thought this was a typical normal clinical trial. The aim was by the shop, a secret government organization, to create superheroes led by the Dr. Wanless. Now they were coerced into doing dodgy things and assassinations after this, but they ended up having Charlie and wanted to move on and try and give her a life that is normal and unbeknownst to them they were followed and tracked by the shop the Hollister character however Andy has been using his powers to repress Charlie's pyrokinesis but as she's growing older and it's become a bit more unpredictable however it is also mainly due to the fact that Charlie's power is starting to wane because he is using it and it's starting to make his eyes bleed. Now, after an outburst at school, the former colleagues of the pair are hunting them down and want to use Charlie for their own gain. Now, this leads John Rainbird, who has been activated to hunt them down by the shop and ends up killing the mother while Charlie and Andy go. I like how there was no real stopping moment, there was no sadness, no crying, no emotion over the, the mother and wife dying. The movie is somehow wildly boring and goes too fast. It turns out that the shop kidnapped as a child, but Charlie saved her due to their psychic connection. The father and daughter end up across a farmhouse, but it starts to go south when the guy who took them in sees on the news that they're on the run and blame for his wife's death but the police arrive just as Rainbird does too and we get a standoff this ends up with the good Samaritan shot and also the police I did find it a bit odd that Rainbird did kill them and he didn't really seem to use his his powers that much which was a bit of a weird one but this leaves Charlie having to run off and Andy using his powers to manipulate Rainbird, but he sees through it because, you know, plot. Rainbird has doubts after bringing in Andy and isn't happy hurting people of his kind. This leads Charlie to hear what she thinks is her dad to come and save him. However, it was actually John Rainbird leading her there, which could be a bad thing or a good thing. Everything in the movie seems so convenient and it's just a load of things that happen. We never get much in depth into these characters. It turns out that Andy is dying due to his powers. Like one more push will kill him. He's not specifically dying, but one push will, uh, will, will kill him there. And well, she does come there and of course the evil people <laughs> kill their mum and the leader of the shop gambles that she won't burn her dad and attack her she stands behind him however she's stupid and doesn't take into account that andy using his last push to do it will kill him but also kill her so that's interesting there and that she burns it all down and ends up joining 
Rainbird and becoming a team. This is a change from the 1984 movie where Rainbird died and went to the media. Now, the people behind the movie have expressed interest in a franchise. While there isn't a sequel, it has been left open, as sadly the movie was largely dull. Goes at a breakneck speed, is shot really weirdly and edited like a really bad Lifetime movie. I did want better, because I think Zac Efron's great, and the, the woman who plays his wife, Vicky, also was great in Fear the Walking Dead and Hellstrom. But really, there's just nothing here. There's no substance. I think that Dr. Sleep did the whole protecting the child story wild, wildly better. And the villains in this were very much like cartoony, kind of boring, by-the-numbers villains. But hey, let me know what you think. You might have liked it. I'd love to hear what you think. Do drop a like down below, subscribe with notifications on, and I'll see you soon, and goodbye.